Hey everybody, I thought I would actually get some practice in actually talking in my video tutorials instead of just using annotations so that when you download you don't have to you can actually keep the tutorial part and not just the annot not just the the video part. Anyway, I thought I'd do a series of videos on how to do special effects in Photoshop for use in comics and create a file that you can use over and over again in your comics. So I'm going to do a lens flare for this video that isn't the Photoshop lens flare but it works pretty nicely anyway. So I firstly go to File, New and set it to 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters and 300 pixels per inch. We're making it big so we can distort it and resize it without too much quality loss so you can use it for lots of different purposes and I just pressed X to change my colors and Alt Delete to change the background to black because these effects look best on a black background so I'm using these rulers up here if you can't see the rulers in your Photoshop you go to filter uh, view <laughs> sorry, view, show, oh you can just click rulers here but in previous versions it might be under show instead of just view rulers but anyway I don't really need the rulers what I'm doing is I'm dragging out guides and I'm using the rulers to do that now in Photoshop CS4, these will snap to the middle, you know where it's cutting the canvas horizontally, it's actually snapping there. I don't know if it'll do it in previous versions, it'll probably do it in CS5. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a nice little cross that goes right through the middle of the canvas. Now I create a new layer and go to my gradient tool and I click on this gradient preview here to bring up these options. Now I go to this gradient type I set it to noise and set the roughness to 100% and click this add transparency button and I can click randomize a few times until I find something I like it doesn't matter about the colors, we can fix the colors later. So, I'm actually going to work from the middle of my guides. If I um, just want to check that I've set it to snap to the guides, I'm going to view, snap to, and I've got guides checked there. So, it should snap into the direct, into the exact middle of the canvas. So I press shift as I drag out from that point and okay that is a radial gradient that is not what I wanted I, I forgot to set the gradient to angular angle gradient so that that is probably the fundamental step of making the gradient so I try that again and yes I've got the right effect now except now it's all colorful so I click Control shift U and that turns it into black and white it discards all the color information but there's not enough contrast in there go to image adjustments equalize and it turns the gray beams into black and the white or the light grey beams into white. So now we've actually got black and white beams. Now you don't want the beams to go all the way to the edge of the canvas. I mean not unless you're trying to achieve some sort of warp effect. But I'm going to apply a layer mask to this and fill it with black so it's completely invisible. It's still there, it's just visible. Invisible and apply a radial gradient 
foreground into black and once again I drag out from the middle um, about there I might add a little bit more and that looks pretty good and to lighten up the middle a bit we can create a new layer and make sure your foreground color is white now we're going to create a little light in the middle so that it looks like a flare so I've got my radial gradient selected I set it to foreground to transparent with white as the foreground color and everything seems good there so I'll drag a little bit out from the center just a little bit more holding shift as I go you can make it as big as you want but if you're trying to go for a subtle effect maybe smaller is better so there we have it maybe I can lock the transparency and lighten up these rays a bit okay what I just did I locked the transparency on the layer with the conical or angular gradient on it and I actually used in the same gradient I used for the middle to color the rays close to the thing the um, <laughs> the light in the middle okay so that looks pretty nice so we can actually select our beams layer and go to filter, blur, gaussian blur because it looks a little bit too hard and that just blurs the beams out a little bit so they look more realistic so now that it's right we can merge this down I'm merging down the light layer so it's on the same layer as the gradient with the rays in it I merge it down I want to apply this layer mask because I want to keep it so there my it's all in the same layer and everything that wasn't in the layer mask in the rays layer was actually deleted so now I'm going to apply a hue saturation adjustment layer and set it to colorize and now I can actually make it whatever color I want I can crank up saturation to about 50 maybe a 30 is a nice touch so yeah you can make it any color you want greens okay uh, when you're finished and go to right click on any layer and go to flatten image and you can save this as a TIFF file um, I'll just save it on the desktop uh, it doesn't really matter about any of this stuff so I'll try opening one of my artworks now um, something okay now I'll apply this even though it will look completely out of place you'll notice that it is enormous I think both of these images are 72.09 this is because this image is at 300 pixels per inch but I can resize it to whatever size I want and to get rid of all the black I just set this layer to screen and it looks awesome so that that is how you make a lens flare or 
basically a nice little flare effect. It doesn't really look like a lens flare. But it looks pretty cool anyway. I hope you like that effect and that you got any, something out of this tutorial. And I guess I'll see you next time.